This is kind of a mixed bag, in the sense that some cast members get well used and elements of the bizarre and the ridiculous were at play. Paul Campbell was used as a guy out of his comfort zone on the beach and not in the kit cave back at the SSC, and he sells it well as a guy who does not take to the outdoors too well. I know plenty of people who don't either. It was a missed opportunity with Smith Cho to be used in the same vein as that of Diana Russo, as Zoe was brought in for the mission to find Turner, codenamed Iguana, as she spoke fluent Spanish and knew how to surf, yet the episode only saw her use brief knowledge of how to surf, and that was instructing Mike on how he should stand up on the surfboard. That and she only really served as eye candy, with her in a bikini as a means of blending in, as she put it. Make of that what you will. And let's address the easter egg to Knight Rider G1 with Torres giving them the code names of Devon and Bonnie. I got the sense that was just thrown in for the sake of with no real merit. Now don't get me wrong, I was glad that Edward and Patricia's character names were referenced, but it was just done as a means of throwing a bone to the fans and not really inserting them in cleverly so they would mean something. And another pink elephant I have to highlight is Kit's underwater mode. I think the movie The Spy Who Loved Me would like a word with the producers. Furthermore, it felt like too many cooks spoiled the broth when Billy and Sarah joined them on the mission when it was supposed to be Mike and Zoe's assignment, and by extension, it gave me reminders of Team Knight Rider with that many people on a mission. And the further we stay away from that show, <laughs> the better. The underlying theme of Mike and Sarah, will they, won't they, was at play once more when Kit questions why Mike won't go to the hotel room with Zoe is because of his past relationship with Sarah. This kind of thing was cute in the X-Files with Mulder and Scully with the tension of the will they, won't they scenario, but I've seen that shtick done to the point of exhaustion, and considering they were in a relationship before Mike shipped out overseas, that it really doesn't have the same appeal when it actually serves better if they were t in a relationship previously. Nitpicking? Maybe, but I just know what works. Make of that what you will. Now, with all these discrepancies, that would lead you to think that this was a bad episode. It depends how you view it. I like that certain cast members were taken out of their regular routine and placed into situations that required them to think outside of their comfort zone, and there was good humour with the cast. The what the fudge moments with Kit surfacing made for a good visual despite the absurdness of the notion. I could believe Kit Prime having hydrofoils underneath him in the Season 2 episode Retur Return to Cadiz, where he was able to float on water, but making a muscle car like the Kit Stang to act like Stingray underwater is a lot to convince people with. The story was simple in finding an agent p gone possibly rogue and stopping them from smuggling prototype weapons across the border that just happened to be Night Industries Cobra missiles. The antagonists were pretty much one-dimensional with no redeemable traits except for Skylar Rant, who seemed charming at least with his laid-back and easy-going attitude until you find out that he's a bigger douchebag than Torres. Which, and knowing this series, that says a lot. This is not really an improvement or downgrade from episode 2, more like it wasn't sure what it wanted to be with the changes that went on midway through the episode. A lack of consistency is the best way to sum up this week. Until next time, good night from the night.